All right, I, on fractions and mixed numbers, it says to uh, complete, to get an equivalent fraction. So you have to ask yourself, how do I get from three to six? Okay, and I need to see this on your paper. I need to see times two, times two, and then that would be eight. I know many of you can do it in your head, and that's okay, but I wanna see the work. So then how do I get from three to 18? Times what? Six. Yep, times six, and then they, you do the numerator times six. So it's six eighteenths. How do I get from four to sixteen? Times, times four. Times four. So I have to show the work. And so three times four is twelve. What I multiply here? Three. And you get nine twenty-four. So how do I get from four to twelve? times three, and if whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So five times three is 15. Five times what is 50? So four times 10 is 40. Eight times two is 16, so five times two is nine times 45, so seven times five is? I think more of you can be giving me an answer. Eight times what is 48? Six. That's a little bit better. So one times six is? Six. More of you need to answer. Now look, you can do this the same way if you know what's on the numerator. So one times? Four. Thank you. It's four, so two times four is? Eight. Two times? Four. Is eight, so three times four is? Six. Three times? Two. Is six, so four times two is? Eight. Make sure you're showing me that you're multiplying. It's just like two, we're finding the equivalent fractions, but you can also do it by reducing. Right, like if you would start with eight sixths, you divide them both by two to get four thirds. Now we're going to simplify. What does it mean to simplify? By six fifths, what am I making it? I'm making it into a mixed number. How do I make six fifths into a mixed number? Scarlet. Divide um, uh, five by six. Other way. Divide six divided by five. Right, it's always top divided by the bottom. That's okay. So six divided by five. Most of you can do it in your head, but if you can't, show the division. So five goes into six once. One times five is five. Six minus five is one, so it's one and five. One and one fifth. If you can do it in your head, you do not need to show the work. Okay, if you can't do it in your head, go ahead and show the work. So nine fourths becomes what? Hunter? Uh, two and one fourth. Two and one fourth. 10 fifths, just like saying 10 divided by five, which is anybody? Two. Two. Excellent. 18 fifths. Three and three fifths. Three and three fifths. For some of you that cannot do that, it would be 18 divided by five. Five goes into 18, please stop clicking your pens. Five goes into 18 three times. Three times five is 15. 18 minus 15 is three. So the three goes on the top and whatever you're dividing by stays on the bottom. All right, 27 thirds is what? Nine. 20 thirds is what? Six, six and two thirds. Six and what? Two thirds. Two thirds because six times three is 18. 20 minus 18 is two, so it'd be two thirds. 17 thirds is what? Five. Twenty-nine fifths. Five. Just another example for some of you that might need it. Twenty-nine divided by five. Five goes into twenty-nine five times. Five times five is twenty-five. Four left, so it becomes four over whatever you divide by. Forty-four sevenths. Thirty-three fourths. Fifty-seven. 
seven and one seven. Seventeen halves. Eight and one half. Take a picture of it, submit it to the Canvas assignment under bell work, and then have your spiral review out ready to grade. There's no talking. Normally on Fridays, you guys will get a quiz. When you get the quiz, there'll be 10 questions. The 10 questions, I'll have to help you later because I'm recording. There's 10 questions and quizzes count the points. The first time, whether you get them right or you get them wrong. Okay, so if you get them wrong, they'd be considered wrong. Today, we're just doing our last column of the week because we didn't do Mondays on Monday, so we're doing Thursday. Even if it's a quiz, you're going to grade it and make corrections because there might be some weeks where I'm like, oh my goodness, that was a tough quiz. They need to be able to uh, use notes. So all the notes that you take during the week, you can use it on the Friday quiz. And then that helps you whether or not you get them right or wrong. So like always, and I saw some people yesterday not putting their name at the top right hand corner. Not putting period, this is one and two virtual students, you guys are period three. Or you can write virtual. And then this is six, quarter, four, week two. Next week it'll be seventh grade. And then our, on the top one, this is Thursday's assignment. Next week, you will be, the bell work will just be the spiral review, so you'll be taking a picture of this to submit. So we'll start with number one. Put a number one, circle it, and notice I'm going to be using my lines and I'm going to be making this neat. You're gonna grade with a grading pen, so no matter, go ahead, even if you didn't get to it, to get used to grading with a grading pen on this. And if you did get to the problem, that means your whole problem will just be in pen. It's not a big deal. So we start with 10, 11, divided by eight, nine. And the rule for dividing is what? Just tell me, guys. So, right, I'm gonna keep, change the division to multiplication, and instead of saying flip, it's actually called the reciprocal. So in, in uh, seventh grade, we're gonna start learning some of those terms that you know that this is the reciprocal. So I'm gonna have nine, eight. Then I look, can I reduce? And I can. The 10 and the eight can both be reduced by what? Two. Two, and well, because one's on the bottom and one's on the top, I can reduce that way at an angle. So if I reduce 10 by two, it becomes a? five and eight divided by two becomes a four. And then can I reduce anything else? No, because nine is prime and so is 11. So I take five times nine is? And 11 times four is? 44. The, the numerator is greater than the denominator, so I won't need to change it to a mixed number. So this now, I'm gonna reduce it and it becomes what? Say it louder. One and one, 44. Then you're going to put a box around your answer. Number two, Maria's math test had 25 questions. She's got 84% correct. How many problems did she get wrong? There's a couple ways you can do it. You can figure out if 84% is correct, I need to find the percent that is incorrect or wrong. How do I figure out what that percent is? If 84 is correct, what's 
the most percent that you can get on an assignment? 100. So if 84 is what I got correct, how do I figure out how many I got wrong? You subtract. So I'm going to take 100 minus 84. And so I'm going to have to do some work here. And I get 16. So 16% is wrong. Okay? But I need to find out how many that is. And here it says 25 questions. So I take 16% of 25. Now remember, there's two ways of showing this from this week. Of becomes multiplication. I can make 16% as a fraction. And whenever you make a percent a fraction, this number is always over 100. And then I have the times, bless you, 25 over 1. I'm going to reduce first by 25. So this becomes a 1. This becomes a 4. four. Then I multiply. 16 times 1 is 16. 16. 4 times 1 is 4. Then I need to reduce this by saying 16 divided by 4 is 4. four. That's my final answer. But as I said before, sometimes I want to make things with um, decimals because I'm going to use a calculator when I'm at the store or in real life or even when I'm grading your assignment. So I'm going to change 16 to percent to a decimal. So I'm going to have 0 0.16 times 25. So then I'm just going to do, I'll just put 25 times 6, 0.16. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 2 is 12. 13, 14, 15. Add a zero. One times five is five. One times two is two. Add the columns up. Now here I have a decimal with two places, so I start on the right and I go over two. And I get the same answer. Number three. These are the only two ways that, you can, that I want to see it. So then you'll need to make the correction for right now. It says, write an equivalent expression for 8y plus 12 plus 2y plus 8. We haven't had one like this this week. So you're going to start by writing out the problem that they give you, 8y plus 12 plus 2y plus 8. This is actually easier than what you think. All you're doing is combining things that are alike. It's like if I have apples and oranges, I'm going to put apples in one pile, oranges in another pile. Well, letters, numbers with letters will go together, and numbers without letters will go together. So these are our apples and these are our oranges. So what's 2y plus 8y? So I've got 10y plus, what's 12 plus 8? So there's my equivalent expression. And yes, make the lines. If I draw the lines, you need to make the lines. Number four. It says Jocelyn is going to put wood floors down in her living room. The room is 24 feet long and 15 feet wide. How many square feet of wood does Jocelyn need? So basically we're finding the area of the floor. Area, oops, there we go. Area equals length times width. So then we just need to put it's 24 times 15. I can't do a multiplication problem like that. I need to put it up and down. So I'm going to do 24 times 15. 5 times 4 is 20, carry the 2, leaves a 0, 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2 makes 12, cross it off, add a 0, 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2, so I have 360, but don't forget a label, if I go back into the story problem, it says it's feet, so it would need to be feet squared, put a box around your answer. 
Number five. I've got room over here. I think I can make it in that space. Andy is wrapping a present for her best friend. The box is 16 inches long, 12 inches wide, and three inches high. How many square inches of wrapping paper does Angie need for her present? Okay. Min how many of you want to just find the volume of the present? How many of you didn't get to the problem? Okay, several of you. If you're wrapping the box, it would be like, let's pretend this is a box, okay? If I'm wrapping this box, I need paper on this side, on the top. I need paper on the side, paper on this side, paper on this side, paper on this side, and paper on the back. What is it called when I, co when I cover all around that cadence? Okay, so that's what I'm really finding. I'm finding the surface area. All right, so let's kind of draw this box. We've got 16 inches long, 12 inches wide. Oh, uh, wait, let me make that. Let me start just for, just give me just a second. I'm going to do it a little bit better here. I'm going to draw my 3D shape first. And if you're having trouble, just watch. Okay, so it's 16 feet this way. Wide is 12. And height is three. So I'm going to put the height, well, maybe I'll put it back there. So I need to find the front here. Okay? So that would be 16 times what's the height? What is the height? Three. So it would be 16 times three. Okay? But now, how many of those sides do I have? Not two. I have one. The I have the... I have, well, yeah, I have the bottom or this side and the other side, right? Because then the top and the bottom are going to be different. So I'm going to take 16 times 3 times 2, okay? And that equals those two sides. I'm going to do all the math later. Then I need to do the top and the bottom. Well, the top would be, or you can even look here for the bottom, it would be 16 times, what's the width there? 12, so it'd be 16 times 12 times, now how many sides are that? The top and the bottom have how many sides? Two, two. so that's times two again. Then I need to do over here, the ends. The ends, we said this was what number? So that would be 12 times three, and then how many ends do I have? Two. Now later on, you guys are going to get a calculator and just save some time. I'm going to do this work on the calculator. So if you watch it on the calculator, I'm sure it's kind of hard for you guys to see. So 16 times 3 times 2 equals 96. Then I do 16, oops, 16 times 12 times 2. 384. Then I do 12 times 3 times 2, and I get 72. What am I going to do with all of these numbers? Add them up. I got the calculator out. Let's just add them up. 72 plus 384 plus 96. 552. Oops. Sorry. And we are in inches, so it would be inches squared. Because air is not cube. Uh, the reason why we multiplied it by two, because there was two sides of it. Okay? Because this area, area is always squared. Six. George bowled five games. He scored 131, 110, 128, 105, and 120. What is the mean? 
How do I find the mean? What is, what's another word for mean? Anybody? Average. Average. How do we find it? We, what do we do first? Add 131 plus 110 plus 128 plus 105 plus 120. And then we're going to divide it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because there are five numbers. Again, I got my calculator out. Isn't this going to save some time? I know you guys know how to add. So 131 plus 110 plus 128 plus 105 plus 120 equals, so that's 594, and we're going to divide that by 5, 118.8, and it ended exactly at 0.8. Sometimes you may have to round. Number 7. Number 7 says find the mean absolute value or absolute deviation. I want you to cross off. Uh, I'm recording. Uh, sorry. Cross off absolute deviation. It's a, it, can you get the phone? Thank you. So I just want you to find the mean. So we are going to do 4 plus 5 plus 8, or let's write, plus 8 plus 10. We're going to divide that by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll divide it by 5. These are small numbers, so you should be able to kind of add them together, but we've got the calculator, so let's just use the calculator. 4 plus 5 plus 8 plus 8 plus 10 equals 35. Dividing it by 5, and we get 7 as my final answer. Um, the next few problems you do right on the worksheet, because they have the number line drawn, now, yes? Can I move the finger down? Oh, sorry, dear. There you go. Now, when we have to take a picture of this, you're going to have a picture of this whole worksheet. Just try to set your other worksheet next to it so you can kind of get it all in at the same time instead of taking two pictures. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. well, I yeah. Well, that's why, that's why I'm showing you how I want it done on this paper, so you only take one picture, because I don't know how you'll submit two pictures. Mm -hmm. so you can add, you can add. You can add, okay, as long as you guys know how to do that, and then maybe we'll show other people how to do that. So that's fine. All right, so five and seven tenths on the number line. Here's a five, here's a six. We're split up in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces. So that means it's split into tenths already. So this would be five and one tenth, five and two tenths, five and three tenths, five and four tenths, five and five tenths, five and six tenths, five and seven tenths, and then just mark your answer. I told you last week, I was going to tell you it's X and Y, or not last week, yesterday, that you're gonna to need to put that above that. Every time you see an ordered pair, you need to put X comma Y. I said don't worry about the reflection, so you're going to put a line through the reflection. All I want you to worry about is actually being able to plot those points. X goes left and right. So if I have a negative 5, I need to go negative 5, I need to go left first. So there's my negative 5. Then I have a negative 3. So that means I need to go from the negative 5 down 3. 1, 2, 3. And put my dot. So then if this was next week, you're going to take a picture of your work and submit that to Bell Work. Okay, so with the corrections. Today there is nothing to submit.